Welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme two, element four, sustainable rural areas. Put your homework on the desk. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Due to the deprivation in rural areas throughout the UK, attempts have been made to make these countryside communities more sustainable. Being sustainable means that you're meeting the needs of residents now and further on in the future. Therefore, while aiming to meet the needs of residents, they are also considering the environmental impacts of any changes made. For example, whilst a large factory might provide jobs for those living in the rural areas, it may not be sustainable due to the pollution it causes. But how do we decide what a sustainable place looks like? Well, I'm about to introduce to you Egan's Wheel. And Egan's Wheel outlines the criteria that needs to be met for any community, this could be rural or urban, to be sustainable. So if you look at the diagram, you can see that it's split into little wedges, and each wedge represents an element of sustainability. Now we're used to thinking of sustainability only in environmental terms, it's where we're most likely to hear that word linked. But just like we're trying to meet the needs of now and in the future, environmentally, so we're trying to use the resources that the environment has, but also protect them for future generations, we can do the same in terms of social, economic, environmental, and political, those four elements that we try to study in geography. So these wedges are all grouped in terms of social, economic, environmental, and political. The inner ring represents each of those, each theme, that needs to be met in order for a community to be, to, be, to be truly sustainable. The outer ring represents a condition that needs to be met in that thing. So if we take transport, for example, well, each community needs to be well connected with the wider area in order to be sustainable. So we would need to have one village connected to other villages and the larger town and perhaps a major city in order for people to get everything that they need for a good quality of life. Similarly, in the economy, we need to have a thriving economy, so we need to have lots of jobs, we need to have access to services that provide that as well. So let's break these down into their core groups. Socially, the community needs to be fair, safe, and inclusive. So what that's saying is that regardless of who you are, what your religion is, what ethnicity you are, you are able to live in that community without fear of prejudice or without having anything denied to you, such as a service. It's safe, so there's no crime, but also that you feel safe in that community. You don't feel like something could happen or that you all feel that you could be in danger at some point in time. And it's inclusive. Now that's similar to fair, but well, think of it in terms of, there could be many different examples here, but just one off the top of my head, you have an, a community that has a few different languages that are spoken. Well, if you went to your GP and you opened and you wanted some information and you looked in the leaflet, you'd be able to find in that leaflet or another leaflet that has your language that's been accommodated. Or for example, my grandparents are deaf, you would have someone you could contact who could provide as a translator for, a f for when you're trying to access a GP. Economically, the community needs to offer jobs, trade and services. So there's got to be jobs to keep people in the area. There's got to be trade. So that means that businesses can share goods or it could be that you've got people actually coming into your shop and spending money. And there are services available. Now services is a broad term that could be leisure, entertainment, health, education. And then environmentally. So the settlement should strive not to negatively impact on the environment. So when we look at this wedge here about the environment, it says environmental sustainability. Well, what that's saying is when we think of strategies that we're gonna put in place for each of these other wedges, each time we say, is that going to impact negatively on the environment? Or what can we do to prevent it from neg uh, negatively impacting on that environment? Now, I haven't included political, but it is here. So it's under governments, governance, sorry, and it's well, uh, well run, which sounds quite generic, 
what in essence what we're saying is that it could be at a local level like a parish council and what they're going to do is make sure that they're putting things in place that are fair that are inclusive that it's meeting the needs and it's done in a way that engages the entire community so everybody lives in that community they all have a say they all have a voice they can all vote for what they think should happen so let's have a look at some of these strategies in terms of how they're going to meet rural demand one of the biggest issues for rural areas and we looked at this last lesson was the lack of public transport links because rural areas have a low population we have examples where public transport just can't run because it doesn't make a profit this is particularly so for bus routes i live in county durham and there are a lot of local areas that have one bus route and it goes to durham it doesn't go to any wider areas there are some places further out in the countryside in durham that only get a bus service once a fortnight and that's because there's hardly anybody living there it's a very small village and very few people are using that bus service so this is impacting on the rural deprivation of the area because people can't commute they have to leave that area and it's making older generations or people without access to cars their lives even worse so their quality of life is reduced because there's definitely not a gp surgery in a small village of less than uh, 200 people and therefore they are struggling to meet their daily needs what the government and the councils have tried to do is subsidize things like public transport this means that the government is saying bus company i'm giving you x amount of money to keep that bus route open even though it's not making you a profit they're trying to meet meet the shortfall between how much money they're getting and how much money they need to keep that bus route running so some that village in uh, durham they get a bus route once a fortnight the bus company gets additional money to run extra services so instead of going at say eight o'clock in the morning to durham to go and do your banking and then having to wait until five o'clock at night for the bus route to come back and then you can't do that bus again for another two weeks the bus company is going to put on an additional two routes so that you've got one bus route every three days or one bus route every four days instead so that's trying to make it a bit more sustainable in some of the most rural areas so that people will still live in that area and can still live in that area with a good quality of life in terms of jobs the same issue because there's not many people living there it means that the ability to work in that area is reduced because there's just not the profit to be made for a local shop or a larger scale business there's a few different things that people have tried to do this is kind of linked in with the environmental element there's a big campaign at the minute and it's been going on for the last few years now about trying to shop locally so instead of driving 10 miles to the local tesco's to buy some meat that came from argentina lots of people now are looking at how they can shop locally so instead of going to tesco's they're going down the road to the local farm shop and buying the meat from the farmer who reared the cow, the cow in the field and butchered it there on the farm as well so instead of traveling 10 miles for some meat that's traveled over 3,000 miles you're going one mile down the road for some meat that's traveled zero miles it's more environmentally friendly but it's also supporting the jobs of that local area so there's lots of farm shops popping up at the minute other big issues well every village would at one point in time had a pub and that pub was the center of that local economy but as people have dwindled and lifestyle habits have changed pubs have started to close very very frequently now and there are lots of villages that wouldn't have a pub anymore what's happened in some locations is that pub's been taken over by the local community so they've pitched together bought it and they run it together and the idea then is that because it's joint ownership they all feel like they need to use that pub to keep it up and running and something else else that's been trialed is actually merging different shops together so taking the pub as an example there are lots of places now where the pub opens during the day and it sells some local produce it acts a bit like a, a corner shop and it also runs a post office as well and then in the evening it opens up at the pub so it's still a community organization it's still run by the local community 
but it's encouraging more people to use it and to providing services for that local area that may otherwise have nothing. Education and health are both kind of interlinked. The issue with education is to do primarily with the different phases. So a primary school can kind of run with a reduced population of students. It's very hard. So each student brings in a certain amount of money from the government, which pays for keeping the lights on, pays for the teachers, pays for the school, uh, for the meals and everything like that. But if you've only got maybe four or five students, that's not bringing in very much money, which means it's hard to pay the teacher, keep the lights on and everything else. It becomes an even bigger problem when you get to secondary school because you don't just have one teacher teaching you all the subjects. And if you don't have many people in the school, you're definitely not gonna be able to pay for nine different teachers to teach all those different subjects. Now, unfortunately, the issue is that without more people living in the area, that can't really be changed. So what ends up happening is schools become a merger between a few different schools in the area that are struggling to cope. And they become a point of focus that means that you have to travel a little bit longer, but you can still maintain a school in a rural area. So the issue there becomes that you need to make sure that you've got good transport links to get people to school. And it's the same for healthcare. GPs practices are closing because there's not the people available to use them. And hospitals aren't gonna be in villages, they're gonna be in larger towns. So you need to have good transport links to get people to those areas. Well, that brings our lesson to an end. But continue your own pace by completing the Now Try It task for homework. Class dismissed.